Hello students, in the continuation of the uh, lectures of the pharynx, I have told you that we are going to read the pharynx into the two part, one is the wall of pharynx and second is features of the different parts of the pharynx. So we have already done the wall of the pharynx and I already explained the muscles of the pharynx. Now we will discuss about the parts of the pharynx and their features, so the first part is features of nasopharynx. So what is nasopharynx? So nasopharynx is the most superior part of the pharynx. Now when you will see the pharynx, I already told you that pharynx is a tube which is made up of the muscle and the uppermost part of the pharynx is known as nasopharynx. So what is the extension of the nasopharynx and boundaries of the nasopharynx? So when you will see the nasopharynx, it, it is situated, lies posterior to the nasal cavity and superior to the soft palate. So the first and most important landmark comes is posterior to the nasal cavity but superior to the soft palate. Now where is the soft palate? Now this is your soft palate. Now when you will mark the soft palate, it becomes very important boundary between the nasopharynx and oropharynx and we are saying that it is the space which is above the superior surface of soft palate. So we will make a horizontal line here and up to this part you can label it as a nasopharynx. So nasopharynx lies up to the superior surface of the soft palate. So this is the important thing which you have to keep in mind. It's most of the area is immobile. Now this part I have already explained in the pharyngobasilar fascia lecture that pharyngobasilar fascia is a tough fascia and this fascia lies the inner side of your constrictor's muscle. That is a modification of the submucosa and apart from that you have the medial pterygoid plate which is lined by here the this part is actually the medial pterygoid plate which is inner side lined by the mucoperiosteum. So this part is not having the tendency to collapse. This part maintain the lumen or the cavity of this area which is per, uh, responsible for the continuous breathing. So this is important that this area is immobile and this area is not collapsed. It maintain in uh, the area or the lumen is maintained which is requirement of the breathing. The nasopharynx extends from the base of the skull to the upper surface of the soft palate at the level of C1 vertebra. So if you will see posteriorly, now posteriorly you will realize that this is the cut section of the ring of C1. So this C1 ring is lies just behind this part of your pharynx up to the level of superior surface of your soft palate. So when you are reading the nasopharynx, this is the most commonly asked question in your exam about its anatomical limits. So this is the anatomical limit of your nasopharynx. Now in this diagram, if we will cut the pharynx from posterior side, that means if I will cut this posterior pharyngeal wall in the midline from the raphe. Because anteriorly you know that the pharynx is deficient because of the multiple openings. So what we have done is we have removed this vertebral column and we then cut it from the midline. Now when you will see after cutting the midline portion in the posterior side of the pharynx, you can see from posterior side this is your posterior opening of the nasal cavity into the pharynx. This is the posterior opening of your oral cavity into the pharynx and this is your opening of larynx. Now today as we are discussing this nasopharynx, you can see that this is the nasal septum which you can see. These are the projection from the lateral wall of the nose which are known as conchas. And the important thing is that in the lateral wall of your nasopharynx, you can see the protrusion of cartilaginous part of auditory tube which is visible here in both the side. So this is the important thing which you have to understand that when we are talking about the nasopharynx, you cannot forget the openings of auditory tube into the lateral wall of your nasopharynx. And apart from this, you can see that these auditory tubes are, are giving the origin of it, this thin muscle which you can see arising from both the side and this muscle is known as salpingopharyngeus. Now 
what are the boundaries of nasopharynx so nasopharynx is having a roof anterior wall lateral wall posterior wall and floor so we'll discuss one by one first is the boundaries of structures in the anterior wall so when you will see the anterior wall anterior wall is having a communication anteriorly with the nasal cavity which we just discussed so you have the nasal cavity in the anterior part and the communication with the nose is known as posterior nasal aperture and these nature, nasal aperture are known as coeni or posterior nares. So this is the area where you can see the communication of the nasopharynx with the nasal cavity and that communication is known as posterior nares or coena. Then you have the roof. Now the roof is something which is formed by the bones which you can see here and it is mainly formed by the sphenoid bone and it is contributed posteriorly by occipital bone. So these are the two bones which are contributing in the formation of the roof of your nasopharynx. Then you have the posterior wall. Now when you will see the posterior wall, it is form continuous continue sloping surface with the roof. So this is a sloping surface where you have the continuation of the roof with the posterior wall. The important thing which you have to understand that the posterior wall lies in front of the C1 vertebra which I just told you that there is a ring shaped cut section of the C1 vertebra and we have seen that the anatomical limit of the nasopharynx is up to the C1 vertebra. So this posterior wall of the pharynx up to the C1 vertebra which is contributing or which is actually uh, labeling the superior surface of your soft palate. So only this much portion of the pharyngeal wall considered as a posterior wall of nasopharynx. Then you will have the lateral wall. Now lateral wall is somewhere here. Now this will be considered as a lateral wall and this portion is actually inner side of your medial pterygoid plate because just behind the medial pterygoid plate or I should say the posterior margin of the medial pterygoid plate is having the supporting structures for your auditory tube. So this is the auditory tube opening and whenever you are drawing the medial pterygoid plate, you should always keep this thing in mind that if I have to draw the medial pterygoid plate in this section, I should go anterior to the uh, me, this auditory tube opening. So this will be the placement of your medial pterygoid plate. It cannot be behind this opening. So this is the important thing which you have to understand. So this lateral wall of the uh, nasopharynx is formed by the medial pterygoid plate and this medial pterygoid plate is covered by the nasal mucosa and mucoperiosteum. Then we will talk about the floor. Now floor is formed by the pharyngeal isthmus. Now what is pharyngeal isthmus? Pharyngeal isthmus is this gap. Now through this gap the nasopharynx can uh, make a continuity with this area that is known as oropharynx. So what is the pharyngeal isthmus? This is very commonly asked question in your viva. Pharyngeal isthmus is nothing but it is an opening in the floor and this opening lies between the free edge of the soft palate and posterior pharyngeal wall. So this is the soft palate and this is the posterior pharyngeal wall and in between you have this space through which the nasopharynx communicating with the oropharynx and this space is known as pharyngeal isthmus. So now we will see the features of each and every wall one by one. So first whenever you are writing on the features of lateral wall of the pharynx which is the most commonly asked question in your exam. There are three major features which you have to write down in exam. First feature is known as the pharyngeal opening of auditory tube. It is known as pharyngeal opening of auditory tube. Then you will have a elevation around that opening is known as tubal elevation and the another name of this elevation is known as torus tuberius, torus tuberius. Then you will have the one more important thing on the lateral wall of the nasopharynx that is known as fossa of Rosenmuller, fossa of Rosenmuller, its another name is known as pharyngeal recess. So these are the three important features on the lateral wall of nasopharynx which you supposed to write in your exam. So first we will talk about the opening of auditory tube. Now this opening of auditory tube is located into the lateral wall of nasopharynx which is triangular in appearance. 
Now why it is triangular in appearance? Because this opening impression is created by the medial cartilaginous end of the auditory tube. Now when you will see the cartilaginous part of the auditory tube, the cartilaginous part of auditory tube is actually this in this form. It is a tube, though it is considered as a tube, but it is not a complete circular tube. It is having the cartilaginous component only into the two part. You can see that it is a J shape, inverted J shape cartilaginous component. Its lower part completed by a fibrous tissue which make a connection between these two edges of the tube. So you will realize that because it is a J shaped cartilaginous end of your auditory tube that's why this impression is become triangular on the medial side uh, on the lateral wall of nasopharynx. The opening is guarded above, behind and in front by the prominent round ridges. So why there are only the uh, prominences on the upper part, posterior part and in front part not on the lower part because the cartilage is absent in the lower part. So you will have the prominent opening on in the upper part, in the posterior area, in the anterior area but in the lower part this is not showing any kind of prominent uh, prominency. So it is a trumpet shape opening and this elevation of the cartilage is covered by the mucosa and that elevation is known as torus tuberius or tubal elevation. So now you should able to understand that what do you mean by torus tuberius or tubal elevation. So torus tuberius or tubal elevation is nothing but there is a tubal elevation of the cartilage on the medial uh, end of the auditory tube which is actually facing inside the lateral wall of the nasopharynx and this is actually known as torus tuberius or tubal elevation. But the important thing is that this elevation is present in the anterior side, in the posterior side, in the upper part but it is not in the lower portion, lower portion is smooth because the cartilage is not present in the lower part of auditory tube. So this is the important thing. Now there is a one more term comes is what is tubal tonsil. Now what will happen that the mucosa of this tubal elevation is having the collection of lymphoid follicles and this lymphatic tissue when become prominent then it is known as tubal tonsil. So what is the important importance fe features of this tube? auditory tube elevation or tubal elevation. It is in the shape of the inverted J which I told you why this is inverted J shape and its long limb is present on the posterior aspect. So the long part of the limb is present in the posterior aspect, short part of the J present on the anterior side and extending down from the torus is a vertical ridge of the mucosa is known as salpingopharyngeal fold and this salpingopharyngeal fold contained the muscle is known as salpingopharyngeus. So from this you are having a muscle which is going downward and this muscle is arising from the lower part of the auditory tube and this is known as salpingopharyngeus muscle and this muscle is covered by the mucosa is known as salpingopharyngeal fold. Now locate the pharyngeal opening of the auditory tube by probing the lateral side of nasopharynx. So whenever you are doing the dissection, if you want to locate the auditory tube, you have to pass a very small probe and you have to pass the probe in the lateral wall of the nasopharynx through this opening and how to locate this opening the anatomical landmark is that it is around 2 cm posterior to the inferior concha. Some book says it is 1.25 cm but the maximum limit is 2 cm. So it is varying from 1.25 to 2 cm but the important landmark is inferior concha. So where is inferior concha? This projection is known as inferior concha which is a projection of the lateral wall of the nose. Now at this level you can see that auditory tube is present and the distance between these posterior border of the nasal concha and the auditory tube is somewhere around 1.25 to 2 centimeters from its posterior end. So you have to understand this part which is a very commonly asked question that when you are going to locate the medial opening of auditory tube how you mark it. So this is the criteria to mark. Then 
there are two terms which comes one we have already discussed is known as torus tuberius but there is a one more term is known as process tuberius so what is process tuberius process tuberius is a bony part while torus tuberius is a feature produced by the cartilaginous protrusion into the nasopharynx now this process tuberius is actually a bony projection which is a part of your medial pterygoid plate now when you will see the medial pterygoid plate this is your medial pterygoid plate now we are seeing you are seeing the inferior side of the base of his skull but when you will keep it in anatomical position now you will realize that the auditory tube is running just adjacent to the base so this is the auditory tube which is running just along the base of the skull and just below this uh, auditory tube there is a small projection is present in this posterior part of your medial pterygoid plate now this projection which is present here is known as process tuberius that is known as process tuberius so you have to keep this thing in mind that process tuberius is a bony projection it is a part of medial pterygoid plate and above the process tuberius you will have a notch on the posterior part of the medial pterygoid plate that notch actually accommodate the medial end of the auditory tube so this is the important thing you always keep in mind the difference between the process tuberius and torus tuberius torus tuberius is a opening uh, is a elevation in the lateral wall of nasopharynx while the process tuberius is a bony landmark on the posterior border of medial pterygoid plate now what is the role of tim uh, this uh, pharyngotympanic tube or the auditory tube the role is that this tube interconnect the middle ear cavity with the nasopharynx so it is important because air pressure in the pharynx is the same as the air pressure outside the tympanic membrane what does it means now suppose this is your middle ear cavity and this middle ear cavity is connected with the uh, this nasopharynx and nasopharynx is open anteriorly to the atmosphere by the nose so whatever the pressure is here and whatever the pressure outside this here this is the external acoustic meatus that means your external ear so the pressure here and the pressure here is same because this external acoustic meatus is communicating outside to the environment and this nasopharynx is communicating outside to the environment with the nose but now this is a closed cavity which is actually lined by the tympanic membrane on one side so on this tube you can see that outside there is a pressure environmental pressure on the inner side there is environmental pressure so it is important because the air pressure in the pharynx should be is the same as the air pressure on the outside of the tympanic membrane so the pressure should be remain same on both the side so this tube ensure that pressure in the middle ear that is on the inside the tympanic membrane is maintained equal to the atmospheric pressure so once this pressure is equivalent to this pressure then the pressure inside this cavity should be equivalent to this and this pressure clear so ultimately there are three points where the pressure should be same one is nasopharynx one is external acoustic meatus and one is tympanic cavity now this tympanic cavity is having the connection with, with the nasopharynx that is auditory tube but the problem is that this external acoustic meatus is having outside communication so it is having the atmospheric pressure the nasopharynx is having the outside communication with the nose so it is also having the atmospheric pressure now this tympanic cavity should also have the pressure equivalent to the atmospheric pressure which is maintained by this connection or this auditory tube now if the pressure will change into this tube uh, into this tympanic cavity then person will have the effect on the tympanic membrane because the pressure outside is always remain equivalent to the atmosphere so if inside the pressure will high then it will bulge out if the pressure is become low then it will retract and in though both cases the person will feel pain into the ear so this is the important thing that this tube is helpful to maintain the pressure on both the surface of the tympanic membrane because the outer surface is also communicating with the atmosphere and inner side through this auditory tube it is also communicating through the atmosphere now what is pharyngeal recess or the fossa of rosenmuller this is another important feature on the lateral wall of the nasopharynx now posterior to the 
ट्यूबल एलिवेशन नाउ इफ यू सी हेयर नाउ दिस इज द ट्यूबल एलिवेशन नाउ पोस्टीरियर टू द ट्यूबल एलिवेशन यू विल हैव ए स्मॉल रिसेस now this is small recess is known as pharyngeal recess or it is also known as fossa of rosenmuller it results from the annular attachment of pharyngo basilar fascia to the base of skull in front of the carotid canal now if you will see this diagram now in this diagram this is your carotid canal now here you will have the carotid canal on both the side now through this carotid canal you have the entry of internal carotid artery now what where is the location of this uh, fossa of rosenmuller behind the auditory tube so this is the auditory tube now behind the auditory tube that means we are talking about this part now through this part if i will make a puncture i will enter into the internal carotid artery so this is the important thing about the fossa of rosen rosenmuller first where is the position of the fossa of rosenmuller answer is behind at the tubal elevation the second thing is that what is the uh, reason of the formation uh, answer is the twisted or the angular attachment of pharyngo basilar fascia now the third and important thing is that suppose you want to enter the probe into the auditory tube but by mistake you fail to identify the auditory tube and you pass this catheter or this probe inside this fossa of rosenmuller now once you will pass the probe through the fossa of rosenmuller you puncture the pharyngo basilar fascia and i just show that behind this you have the relation of internal carotid artery so you may enter into the internal carotid artery so this is the most important clinical aspect of the fossa of rosenmuller that if by mistake you puncture the fossa of rosenmuller what is the clinical hazard the hazard is that you may damage the internal carotid artery which lies in close relation to this part of fossa of rosenmuller then you will have the features of the posterior wall on the posterior wall you will find the nasopharyngeal tonsil the nasopharyngeal tonsil when enlarged are known as adenoids you will have the pharyngeal bursa and pharyngeal hypophysis or the pharyngeal pituitary now first we'll discuss the nasopharyngeal tonsil now nasopharyngeal tonsils when enlarged in the child then they are known as adenoid these pharyngeal tonsils present in the superior part of the posterior nasopharyngeal wall so this is the posterior nasopharyngeal wall and here you can see these are the tonsils which are known as nasopharyngeal tonsil or once they will enlarge they are known as adenoid so when the adenoids are enlarged often in the young children they can obstruct the posterior nares and the uh, that children the children will have the oral breathing so what will happen when they will enlarge now as they will enlarge they ultimately block this part of the nasopharynx and i have already told you that this part of the nasopharynx is immobile you cannot collapse now what will happen that that part is blocked by the enlarge your nasopharyngeal tonsil otherwise this part always remain patent because anatomically it is having a tough pharyngo basilar fascia covering but once the adenoid will block this portion now that Uh, child will have difficulty in the breathing because the air is not going so now the baby will have the oral breathing clear so this is the most common problem with the adenoid and they can obstruct the nasopharynx opening of the eustachian tube also you can see once it will enlarge it can create the uh, uh, pressure maintenance difficulty in the uh, inner ear uh, uh, sorry in the middle ear and always there are high chances of the middle ear infection which is known as otitis media now you have the next important feature is known as pharyngeal bursa pharyngeal bursa is also known as pouch of the lusca it is a midline nasopharyngeal pouch of posterior nasopharynx and it extend into the nasopharyngeal tonsil what does it means now this is the nasopharyngeal tonsil now sometimes what will happen inside this nasopharyngeal tonsil we have a, a small pouching inside the tonsil you have to first keep this thing in mind that where you will find the pharyngeal bursa or pouch of lushka pouch of lushka or pharyngeal bursa is present inside the nasopharyngeal tonsil this is the first and most important thing so once you will dissect you may not find this pouch 
because this pouch are not a constant finding or if it is present it is inside this nasopharyngeal tonsil it is a midline structure and this is actually the remnant of the communication between the nasopharynx or the cranial part of the foregut and notochord so what is the actually the embryological process is going on that notochord is here now this notochord which is present here is having a communication with the cranial most part of this foregut tube and generally what will happen that this connection will lose out and it will disappear but sometimes the connection will persist and some cartilaginous cell growth is present in this pouch and if this pouch is there it is always present inside the nasopharyngeal tonsil clear so this is known as pharyngeal bursa or the pouch of lushka sometimes you have the question on this pouch of lushka so you should keep two things in mind that pouch of lushka is a feature of nasopharynx and this pouch is present in the nasopharyngeal tonsil as a remnant of the communication between the nasopharynx and notochord then you will have the pharyngeal hypophysis now hypophysis is a pituitary gland you know the embryology it is mainly formed by the neuroectoderm you have the division uh, you have the extension from the neuroectoderm and from below you have the extension from the oral cavity so when you will have the extension from the oral part it is known as rathcase pouch now this rathcase pouch is present in the roof of the pharynx so what will happen that this is the pituitary gland fossa now here you will have the pituitary gland which is having the lower extension of your uh, neuroectoderm and then you will have the rathcase pouch that will protrude like this and it will form the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland now sometimes what will happen that there is a embryonic remnant of this rathcase pouch persist and this rathcase pouch persist in the form of the posterior roof of the nasopharynx as a small invagination or if it is persist then it is known as pharyngeal hypophysis so pharyngeal hypophysis is a very rare finding and if it is persist you can appreciate this physis here inside the wall of nasopharynx now this is actually the pituitary gland which is a remnant of rathcase pouch which is going to form your anterior lobe then we have the features of the floor i told you that in the inferior part there is a communication of nasopharynx with the oropharynx and this opening is known as pharyngeal isthmus so what are the boundaries of the pharyngeal isthmus the space is between the soft palate and the posterior pharyngeal wall so this is the soft palate and this is the posterior pharyngeal wall and in between these two you are able to appreciate this space is known as pharyngeal isthmus so what are the boundaries of pharyngeal isthmus anterior boundary is formed by the posterior surface and the free margin of soft palate so this is the posterior surface of the soft palate which is forming the anterior boundary and posteriorly we have a projection in the midline and that projection is a muscular projection is known as passvent's ridge so what is passvent's ridge passvent's ridge is prominently formed by the u shaped fibers of palato pharyngeus muscle so first thing which you have to understand that what do you mean by passvent's ridge passvent's ridge is nothing but it is a midline elevation in the posterior pharyngeal wall and it is contributed by the palato pharyngeus muscle fibers and these fibers swaps horizontally backward in a u shaped manner generally when you will see the palato pharyngeus the muscle arises from the soft palate and it will go downward vertically it will go downward vertically and ultimately it will insert into the posterior part of thyroid cartilage but some of its fiber is making a u turn some of the fibers is making a u turn and these fibers which are making a loop are responsible to form the passvent's ridge and these fibers merge with the fibers of superior constrictor so there is a combination of the inner fibers of palato pharyngeus muscle with the outer fibers of the superior constrictor muscle so what will happen that this u shape loop is pulled forward now this u shape loop whenever we have the process of deglutition it is pulled forward 
So when it will pull forward, it produces an elevation in the midline and simultaneously there is a lifting of this free part of the soft pellet and both of them will meet in this part and they will close this isthmus. So whatever the food is present here in oral cavity will not regurgitate into the nasopharynx. So during the swallowing, the pharyngeal isthmus closed by the elevation of soft pellet. This is the first event. And along with that, there is a pulling forward of the posterior pharyngeal wall. So there is a pulling forward of the posterior pharyngeal wall and that will produce the elevation is known as this passivant ridge. And there is a pulling upward of the soft palate. They both will meet and close this opening. And the function is to it act as a palatopharyngeal is, uh, sphincter to prevent the entry of food into the nasopharynx. So, at the end of this class of the nasopharynx, I hope now you should be able to understand the boundaries of the nasopharynx, anatomical limit of the nasopharynx. The important thing is the lateral wall features where you will find the opening of auditory tube, what is the tubal elevation, what do you mean by the tubal tonsil, what is the clinical problem comes with the fossa of Rosenmuller, what is pharyngeal isthmus. So, this is all about this features of nasopharynx. Thank you.